Today's episode of The Tub is sponsored by Eitner Education. Since 2006, Eitner Education has been providing meaningful, effective, affordable professional development geared towards teachers, administrators, and central office personnel. There are six spots open for the 2017-18 school year. Rates start at $7,500 for the day, Title IIA accepted. Visit www.eitnereducation.com. Hello and welcome to episode four of The Tub, with your chance to relax, get wet, and soak in all the great things that are happening in education today. I'm your host, Superintendent of Schools, Jay Eitner. Well, let's think about it. I, I am a superintendent of schools, but one thing I'm definitely not is a podcaster, right? There's, I'm not a podcaster. I just have a microphone and a hot tub. I'm speaking my mind, telling people things that aren't shared that often in education, and kind of spewing honesty, something that we sadly really don't hear about. You know, we see a lot of the social media and everything is wonderful and fantastic nonsense. Um, you know, I'm guilty of that a little bit, but I, I think we also have to have some discussions or some some dialogue at the very least that also shows that, you know, education is just like every other job and we have to work hard at it. And, you know, people are going to make mistakes. But anyway, uh, I'm getting a lot of email about the show, and actually I'm going to dedicate episode four to everyone who's been sending in emails, and I'm going to talk about some questions and responding to some comments, some good comments, some bad comments. Uh, I, I hope no one's thinking that this is going to turn into Dear Abby. Uh, just for the record, I'm, uh, I'm pretty ugly, and you know, sitting here in a bathing suit in a hot tub, that's, that's not really the best sight to picture. Uh, so I wanted to get right to it. And uh, this is uh, just addressing a little bit of criticism that was recently relayed to me because, of course, uh, this podcaster has no chutzpah to actually say something to me. But uh, a podcaster uh, who, who has a lot of time to put together and make some really, you know, professional quality stuff, no doubt, uh, you know, heard my, my podcast and called it a joke. And, you know, I, I had to laugh myself because never did I think I was going to be a podcaster. But, um, you know, all the other feedback that he uh, relayed through someone else, I, I say thank you uh, because it does help me grow. But it's, it's also special because who this feedback is coming from. I mean, this is a podcaster who has been, quote unquote, employed as a full time babysitter uh, for the past several years because, you know, this person couldn't get a job anywhere else. So. You know, being a full-time babysitter and having the opportunity to make beautiful graphics and record professional projects and work on your personal stuff all day instead of actually doing a job. But wait, that, that is your job, right? You, you babysit suspended kids all day. Like, that's what you do. That's amazing. I mean, I should be commending you for landing such a cushy job. But at the same time, as a taxpayer, I'm kind of annoyed because, you know, how do you have that job and do everything else? But... Whatever. Hey, good for you, man. I don't want to, you know, stop your, your path of, of babysitting righteousness. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, you definitely have the time and talent to sit around and, and do all that stuff. And I don't. You know why? Because I'm a superintendent of schools. So I, I commend you for, again, having such a great job. But, but at the same time, it's what reality that counts, right? I mean, what's really going on in the world? We could sit there and you know, give a false projection of, of what we're doing and what we're saying. But when it comes down to it, it's the person holding the job and the person making decisions. We could sit around and talk about all these things. We could sit around and imagine what it's like. Uh, I, I don't have to do that because you know what? I've climbed the educational ladder. And again, I'm a superintendent. I don't have time to sit around and make all these personal, wonderful, professional podcasts. You do. Have fun doing it, babysitter. I'm a superintendent who actually leads and makes a difference. Uh, in no way or form am I saying am I perfect, nor I'm ever going to try to be, but I've certainly had my controversies, and I'm loved and I'm loathed, and believe me, I wouldn't have that any other way either. You know why? Because that means I'm actually getting stuff done. But there's definitely a difference in this, you know, this quote-unquote podcast and all of the professional ones. Um, I actually lead and make a difference. You know, I don't sit around and talk about it. I don't wish and wonder what it was like. 
I do it. I walk the walk and I talk the talk because I'm a leader and the person who's sending this critique, you're a leader of what not to do in education as evidenced by your suspension a few years ago. So as a leader of the B squad, you know, the babysitting squad, uh, I would just be lucky to have your license, right? But anyway, back to my crappy podcast. This month, I'm actually going to answer some of your questions and address some of your comments in my new hot tub segment, I'm calling the scenario. Here we go. No bonus points to everyone who can identify this song. If you don't know what it is, that would be the creators of hip hop themselves, a legendary group called A Tribe Called Quest. You wouldn't have 90% of rap or hip hop today without them. And of course, that name is The Scenario. So, I hope you guys like that. Um, first scenario, Dear Jay, love your show and appreciate you telling like it is. I'm a new superintendent from the great state of Maine. Hello, Maina. Uh, have you ever had to fire anyone? I have to do it this week and don't even know where to start. Well, yes, I have had to fire people, and I will tell you that it is one of the most horrible, uh, crummy experiences you could have as an administrator. I know, I think there was one movie uh, that I saw where people actually glorified firing, or, you know, you think of, uh, who was that, Spacely Sprocket when he fired Jetson every other day? Uh, I think of George Clooney and up in the air, how he was, you know, flying around the world to basically fire people. There's nothing good about firing someone. Uh, you don't sleep the night before. You have uh, a certain mindset and ways of how do you think you're going to go about doing it. And then all of a sudden everything changes, just like a school day. You, you toss and turn. You, I think I take it so hard because, you know, I'm cognizant of the fact that... It, this is somebody's life, and you don't know every single toss and turn or background that they have to what got them where they are. Um, sometimes it's just, you know, uh, I hate to say it like this, but sometimes if it's just, you know, a legal ramification, like, you know, they're, they're involved in something completely inappropriate or they're breaking the law, well, it makes your life a lot easier. But if it's because, you know, you just don't like how this person is performing or this person isn't performing, I mean... It's, it's hard. Um, you know, they, they have a family more than likely and they're providing and, you know, or they're taking care of themselves. So, uh, it, it's not fun. It's not easy, but I would, uh, recommend, uh, if anything that you document, document, document everything, every step. The moment you start thinking something's up, I would go back and, uh, I'd even go into the employee file, check things out of what happens in the past. If there's any, uh, reoccurring patterns, and then when it comes to that day, uh, you sit down with that person. I always had uh, other people in the room with me when I did it, just so I had a consistency piece. And, you know, you move forward. It's, uh, again, it's it's not fun. It's There's nothing great about it at all. So uh, best of luck to you. Uh, please keep me in the loop as to how that works out for you. Second scenario coming in from Ocean County, New Jersey. Greetings from Ocean County, Jay. Summer is here and we are recharging. Good for you, because if you weren't recharging this summer, I'd ask, what What are you doing? I mean, that's what summer's for. You need to recharge those batteries. So important. Anyway, do you recommend any apps or must-haves that I could turn key to my admin and my teachers for 2017-18? Actually, I do. Um, there's two of them. One I just came across at a conference called Palooza, which is done by the legend known as Carl Hooker. Yes, that's his real name. Uh, Mr. Hooker has put together an extraordinary conference uh, down in the great state of Texas, specifically over at Austin, focusing on different apps and programs that you could use. And yes, it uh, typically circulated around the iPad, but there were so many other different opportunities. Uh, I learned one actually from uh, Dr. Monica Burns. Shout out to Class Tech Tips. She taught me about the Adobe Spark. And think of Spark as like PowerPoint meets uh, Audacity, meets, you know, a haiku deck, I would say. It, it's kind of all three into one. Great pictures, great graphics, and then you could add your own personal voice and music, and it's it's really cool. It's, it's kind of almost like, um, like an iMovie, like souped up, 
I can't believe I just said souped up, but I did. How about it? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend Adobe Spark. And then my second uh, go-to that I'm, I'm really actually giving a, a hard refocusing on because it's been so helpful over the past uh, year or so for me is actually Haiku Deck. I did just mention that. Uh, PowerPoint's dead. We all know that. Friends don't let friends PowerPoint each other to death. Uh, you've probably been subjected to either death by PowerPoint with seven paragraphs of information on one slide, or you've done it before. Uh, I'm the first, guilty as charged. So Haiku Deck is great because it limits the amount of characters that you could put in a slide, and it also uses all Creative uh, Commons imaging, so you have permission to use the pictures that you have. Win-win for everybody. So those are the two uh, apps that I would recommend over the summer. Scenario number three. Hey, Jay, I saw that you presented at ISTE this year. It seems like madness. Yes. Would you recommend going? Yes. Um, this year it was in San Antonio. Next year it's going to be over in Chicago. It is by far one of the best conferences to go to during the year. And believe me, I do a lot of conferences. Um, they're tiring. They're not, you know, uh, everyone thinks it's like, you know, you go and see the sights and you eat and drink. Uh, I mean, I don't know about you, but but I'm up at 6 a.m. And uh, I know a lot of other people are. I mean, Alice Keeler has her coffee EDU at 6 a.m. And then, you know, there's people brainstorming and collaborating at 11 o'clock uh, still in the convention center. So it's it is madness. Uh, I believe there were 21,000 people here this year at ISTE, which is uh, amazing. But you have, you know, uh, it's a conference, so you have keynote speakers, you have people, you know, conventioning on the floor, if you will. You have the, the all, every vendor known to man in educational technology, but you also have just a plethora of workshops by people that are, you know, huge heavy hitters in the educational field, and they, some of their stuff is absolutely fantastic. I mean, this past Disney, like, like every other conference I've been to, uh, some workshops are absolutely golden, some aren't. I mean, that's the risk you got to take into going in, but you do have two feet and you could get up and go if, if you need to. So uh, scenario number four comes in and it says, uh, Dear Captain Technology, how are you reaching out to the families and students who can't afford tech? And this is from Skipper Neal in Nebraska. Well, hello, Skipper Neal. Um, I'm going to ask a foolish question. I can't think of any... Uh, natural bodies of water in Ala uh, Nebraska. Shame on me, but I'm assuming there's there's some type of uh, lake and or river to be had to uh, be skipping on. So uh, first of all, safe travels to you, Skip. Second, there are two programs that I've been really pushing in terms of digital equity around the country. And the first one is provided by our federal government, by the FCC, called the Lifeline Program. This was actually established under President Reagan in the 80s. There's your useless fun fact of the day. But the purpose of Lifeline in the 80s was to actually get everybody a telephone and then to supplement uh, for those who can't afford the telephone. Uh, the Obama administration, before they departed, actually modified the term. So now uh, Lifeline actually covers broadband internet service and telephone service. So... Uh, if you are have families that qualify in the free and reduced lunch scale, so that is people who are making less than the federal poverty guidelines, which every district has them. I don't care where you work. I don't care the size of your district. Every district has people that are free and reduced lunch. Those people that are on free and reduced lunch can actually qualify and be charged $10 a month for their uh cable and or internet services and their telephone services. Now under this deal, uh, FCC will provide a $9.75 grant to the cable company. So now it's 25 cents a month for those, again, who are on free and reduced lunch status. That is amazing. And a lot of people say, well, how come I haven't heard about it? And why don't I know about this? It's simple. You don't know about it because the cable company doesn't have to tell you about it. That's one of the provisions as to why they signed on to this. So all major cable companies have to do that. That does not include Dish TV because they are technically not a cable provider of service under FCC parameters. So, uh, you know, whether you have Comcast, Cox, uh, DigiOne, Windstream, Verizon, Fios, uh, whatever your, your provider may be, uh, they are obligated and are required 
to provide this $9.75 grant. Uh, there is paperwork involved that does have to be filled out by the family of the person applying, not the school district. So I would encourage you to Google uh, FCC Lifeline. I also have resources on my website, EitnerEducation.com. Uh, there is a haiku deck actually titled FCC uh, Benefits. The second uh, program that I've been talking about extensively around the country is called America On. And America On started under the Obama administration with the sole purpose of getting everybody on the same page in terms of technology. Uh, my story, I was driving home one day uh, and I saw about 60 kids sitting in front of McDonald's and they weren't eating chicken McNuggets or drinking shakes. They were using the Wi-Fi to get their homework done, which uh, aggravated me to no end because, you know, A, I have teachers giving out homework uh, that, that can't be done at home. Uh, and B, I have, uh, you know, kids in this scenario where Wi-Fi is almost considered a utility at this point. Uh, so what America Anna does is if you are a family making less than $55,000 a year, much different from the poverty guidelines, but if you're making less than $55,000 a year, uh, America On can get you a wireless hotspot for your house for up to 10 devices. You could get up to four gigs of data per month from that wireless hotspot, which translates to about 30,000 emails, 26 hours of live streaming, uh, plenty of time to get homework and other things done. And it costs $78 for five years. I'll say it again, $78 for five years. That's huge. Uh, it depends on who covers the region, who's the most popular. So it could be AT&T, Verizon, Cricket. Uh, I was recently working with Sprint. It, it all depends, but America On does the, the provider uh, finds out who, who has the best coverage and then sets everything up. But again, $78 for a five-year deal for a wireless hotspot that again, even your transient populations can utilize from place to place because it's already purchased. That's a no-brainer. I mean, that's, that's a great opportunity. Um, again, more information on that on EitnerEducation.com and also under the uh, Haiku Deck presentations. Last question coming in. Fit scenario coming at you. Hi, Jay. My name is Bobby, and I'm an assistant superintendent in Nevada who has had his own drama over the past year. Well, good for you, Bobby. I have been dealing with trolls for about three months now. How do you deal with them? <laughs> Let me tell you. Uh, well, first, Bobby, thanks for the question. Second, uh, trolls are not going to go away. These are the 1% of people who are just, they have nothing to do but have a passion to try to make your life miserable. And, you know, you can say, well, look at them, you know, how miserable are they wasting all their time and talent on you? This is true, but that's that's not gonna change the fact that they're still gonna try to play gotcha with you on everything you say and everything you do. My recommendation um, is you kill them with kindness. And uh, I mean, you know, you, you obviously have to take uh, certain cautions into play. I mean, I've had trolls, uh, you know, send threatening messages and I've, I've even had one show up at my house a couple months ago who I had to get law enforcement involved but that's uh, that's the nature of the beast I mean you're in this position and, and you're at the center of public opinion and you know I, I have no problem with people voicing their concerns or uh, voicing their praise that's all fine and good but um, if you do cross if you come across these people that start crossing that line when you know you're you're you know, threatening family members or you're, you know, you're saying you're going to blow up something. I mean, you know, there, there is a, a blatant red flag where you get other people involved to get them to stop. Um, if you want, Bobby, you could uh, send me a message and, and we could get into it with a little bit more detail. But anyway, those are my five scenarios. And uh, we're going to wrap actually up this quote unquote podcast at this point. I hope everybody is uh, enjoying their 4th of July holiday. It's uh, rather disgustingly humid here in the state of New Jersey. I'd say go to the beach, but do so. Make sure it's not a state-sponsored beach because uh, we are in a uh, budget showdown right now, which means uh, no public New Jersey facilities are open, which makes things uh, very interesting. So hoping that you... Uh, you make some lemonade with those lemons, and I'm wishing everyone a wonderful, happy summer. Take care now.